what's up everybody in the here welcoming you back into another video and in today's video i'm going to show you my home network and how i have upgraded it all this level of complete setup where everything is well organized starting with the network internet of things devices power cables nas drives everything and you don't see a lot of wiring as well around it too to start with on back of my television i have got this everything which you can see is a mess starting with the power socket on the top as well as the ethernet wire and wireless connections and to attach few more things on the top i have got this nvr unit as well which is you can see by the wiring of it it looks mess as well now right in the back in here my system is consist of tp link m5 mesh wi-fi system which is working pretty good for so far and one ethernet switch for all all wired connections like uh, philips hue and the thermostat and so many other things as well i prefer wired connection all the time but it's an eight port i've got a virgin media connection which is 350 mbps and honestly speaking oem provided wi-fi router is not really great to be honest with you will not really work very well in english i would say Victorian house with thick walls. So what I've done is upgraded to this TP-Link M5, which is working great so far. This is not the only setup I have in my home. I've got multiple places, different different switches, which are kind of a mess. So to start with, I'm going to upgrade this whole area where first I'm going to have a 24 port switch, managed switch actually here. Then right on the other side, I'm going to install my NAS, which is a I think 8 terabyte NAS which I'm going to install down there well let's go ahead with the first process which is building the network rack and all the parts and tools which I'll be using in this video link for them will be available in the video description where first to start with I have RJ45 0.25 meter long cables which I'll be using between patch and the router colored RJ45 boot cover caps to designate the different different color for different different network if possible rj45 cat 6 connector if i have to make extra patch cables one network unit brush assembly to pass all the cables very nicely inside the network unit one power distribution unit for cabinet come with all protections you need for your network system as well as the six outlet plugs one 24 ports patch network rack with all the instruction that how to connect all the wiring on the back we'll be showing you in more detail how to do this all one 19 inch foldable wall rack with the four unit inputs and adjustable from 24 to 40 centimeter color is a black color but you can get other colors as well but they, don't, they don't really look very nice now rack come with everything you wanted to have in it some fittings to mount this rack on the wall as well as screws to mount your network rack on the rack unit the reason i've chosen the four unit rack is basically in future if i wanted to extend it i can just put another rack on the top rather than going with the six unit it would look much more bulkier and a bit too much as well now this rack also give me adjustment as well as you can see that so if i'm installing a patch cable i can actually move them in and out if i wanted to first i'm going to install all my equipment inside following with the adjustment is size whatever I needed on my wall now we are at the important part of your network rack is the switch I have gone with the network switch which is a manage actually by ZYXCL company so I'm gonna get a web access for it so I can set up everything on it I could have gone with the standard switch but I thought why not use when I have a bit of extra features because I would like to make my rack whole network system as the future compatible yes one would say that why don't you go with the 10 gigabyte kind of a setup but guys i don't think so i need it this network switch can give me two gig each port without any problem that's what they promise actually so here is the whole setup you can buy this same switch in a network rack assembly or the desktop if you want to I will leave the link in the video description for you to check out so here we have our network switch 
the model number is available right in here you can see all the status indicator lights as well as rj45 terminals in here you also have two extra terminals which i really don't know at this moment of time maybe by the end of this video i will do a bit of research and know about it power for your switch is available on the back which will make your life easier so here we have everything which came with the network switch one user manual explaining each and everything along with the warranty card, power cable, couple of screws to mount the network rack. Obviously the whole switch is network rack mountable so you can use it as well like that. Or you can install this rubber stud underneath your switch to use it as a desktop. Now just before going ahead and placing all the equipment inside your rack, it's very important that you decide that what you're going to do with it. Are you going to wall mount it or are you just going to place it on the shelf? At this moment of time to start with, I'm going to place it on the shelf. So it is very important for me to put everything right in here. But if you are going to mount this rack on the wall, I would highly recommend you guys to install this whole unit on the wall first before installing all the equipments inside. Now let me go ahead and quickly install each and every part inside. And that process is very self-explanatory that how everything go together. So I'm going to do a bit of fast forward on it. So first we're going to install all the nuts which are needed to fix all our network units which are very easy to do that by using this push assembly right in here simply push it in and drop it down so you should be able to face it like this way you can see that so when you put your screw in there it tighten up itself now in the beginning it's a bit difficult to understand it, that how it's gonna go but once you get the hang of it you should not have any problem whatsoever with it now the first now now the first unit I'm going to install is this brush plate because I will be putting this on my shelf so underneath it will be all covered so it is very important to have a brush plate in the bottom following with the power distribution box the reason I'm putting the power distribution in the middle is basically that none of this power will be touching the shelf itself so all the power cable will be coming here straight away going into back of it simple is that i can also use this for all network cables if i want to now the third unit which i'm going to place is the network switch right in here but before that i need to install these plates on it both network brackets are fixed now let's go ahead and install the switch right in there in the middle all right there we go so here we have our complete network rack starting with the patch panel on top network router power distribution and the cable management for the power as well as the ethernet cable if possible it's time to install all the patch cables which we're going to connecting all wired connections right in the patch panel on the back and all the instruction that how to do this all are available within the packaging as well as i'll be showing you as well so let's get down to that part where we're going to take this panel off from the network rack let's start with the number one port which is right on the back in here now all the instructions which are available within are pretty much straightforward the only thing you need is this tool makes your life way easier i will leave a link in the video description for that for you too now first thing you gotta do grab hold of your patch cable okay once you got it using the tool cut about one and two one and a half inches Right like that take it out that's how easy and straightforward it is i will leave the link in the video description for all the tools i am using so now let's clear all these things up first and straighten all the cables too once all wires are straightened follow the instruction that how to lay them down using the patch installation guide now in here you have a two types of configuration with respect to your wiring one is a t568a or t568b now you have to remember which one you have followed actually there's only one difference you have got in there is a 
cross section is actually a cross between uh, green and orange cable because they are the ones which are normally used now on your patch panel you can also see the numbers with respect to the colors now as you can see right in here if number one that is representing your rj45 connector actually now in my case i'm starting with the white and a green so that would be down here white and green okay number four one one two three four right in there just just push it in then after that obviously it's a green color all right is my six okay is my eight brown is always same number four would be light orange so let's count it starting with like that one two three four here just right there then after that orange itself then you have the light blue right there and the blue there you go now once your all wires are inside by using this pull down tool i will leave a link in the video description you can just use it straight away by just simply pressing on top of it like that okay if right there perfectly gone done take it out push it right there pull it down there we go done number third Now, right on the top. Simply push it on top like that. Good thing about this tool is it snaps all excess wire and makes your whole job very tidy. Now if you have an ethernet cable tester available with you, why not try it, make sure that everything is fine with it before continuing and finishing this whole panel. And there we go, everything seems to be good with respect to the connectivity. So all good, now I'm sure you have got an idea, I'll be continuing doing all the wiring and making sure all are done as per the same standard. Amount of patch file connections I have to make at this moment of time are, are done. I have still got a 12 spare which I'm going to do in the future if I want to. And now it's time to tidy up all the wiring. And to use this rail which is on the back as well. Which I'm going to just slide in first. Okay. Simply just slide in like that. Now over here I can use a tie wrap to make sure that everyone is tied up very nicely. So by moving here and there things are not breaking or wires are not coming off. There we go, now it's time to install this patch panel on our network rack. Now let's go ahead with all necessary connections required starting with the power to the switch module which will be going from this distribution box into this here and on the back and all the patch cables which I have made as well. And if you'd like to know how to make RJ45 Ethernet patch cable link would be available in the video description. Now I have got a choice here I can use make the batch cable which are very very cheap to make honestly speaking if you've got a spare time or you can purchase them as well like this one link for both parts and everything you wanted to know is also available in the video description now here we are at the completion stage let of me go our ahead and clear up all rack. this mess Once from this rack and install another rack on the corner too.
Well, it took me almost six hours to build up this whole system. And I'm sorry for that. I could not provide you any time lapse video. But honestly speaking, that really is not necessary. You can see it all and I'm sure you can build it all like that as well. Now, within my setup, I have got this version media router, which is connected to this patch, one of the area, which is going to this router as well, which I have shown you before that how I'm going to do that. Now, instead of using pre-wired patch cables, I made some myself because I had a plenty of time spare with me to build them all up. Now, in here, you can also see I got this TP-Link M5 mesh Wi-Fi network, which is running perfectly well in the system at the moment of time because I have upgraded my Wi-Fi system long ago. So I used this one. It worked great for me. Now, distribution is very nicely done as well. So if I have to restart it, I can do it one click of our button and it's fully protected by earth surge or anything other than whatever i think actually now right on the top you can see that i have got this uh, hd home uh, okay normal tv module for internet thingy next we have is the thermostat controller as well as the Philips Hue light controller as well i had tried my level best in the cable management to hide all the wirings i could have used the trunks if i want to to hide them all in so i don't need to put a lot of tie wraps at all but that would be a bit too much but i wanted to have the facility of going up as well in the future if i want to or take this rack out of it and install it in loft now here is a quick look on other side where you can see that i have installed this distribution uh, socket right in there on the back which is powering all internet of things devices like on the top here philips hue solus control for thermostat as well as the TV module. Down in here, I have got this NVR unit from Real Link, which is connected with the five, five megapixel cameras around my home. I'm gonna show you as well in this video too. Then we have got here is a Netgear NVR with the four drives and I'm running Plex server on it too. That's how easy and simple setup I have. I know it's a bit of wiring issue in here. I wanted to sort it out later on, which I'm going to do it for sure. Now, all my cameras, which are connected with this real link NVR are also connected with my television so I can see it live what's going around the property all the time. You can see that right there clearly that how they are working. And the picture quality of these camera is fantastic. I have done a review about these cameras. Please check them in a the video description. I have left a link for you guys. Within this video, my main target was to show you how I have built this network rack. But other than all these things are very user friendly and everybody, anyone I suppose, can do that much better job than I have done it. I'm sure some of you will comment within this video too, sharing that they have done a better job than I have. I would be very welcome to all those comments. That would be all from my side guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you still have any more questions about any of the parts I have used in this video, please do let me know in a comment section down below. On that note guys, thank you for watching this video. Shall see you soon into another one. Bye for now.